Okay, so I want to uh, show you a preview of a project I'm working on. Um, it's about hot loading application state. And hot loading is something you are probably familiar with regarding styles, so that you can just change uh, CSS and it just hot loads. So let me give an example here. I will change the background color to red and the browser doesn't have to refresh. It just injects the new styles. Um, and what's uh, really cool about this concept, it's, it's just a lot easier to work on your project. Uh, you don't have to refresh all the time. Now, uh, with the release of React, there was a project called, there is a project called React Hotloader for Webpack, uh, a project by Dan Abramoff, and it's really, really awesome. And it gives the same uh, workflow just with components. So if I go into the app here and I change that to hello world and save that, we see that it just changes. And it's not that the component itself is like rendered again, because if you uh, keep some state and you do a change, it will actually keep that state around. So it's it's a lot more complex than than hot loading style sheets, but even uh, and and that makes it just even more powerful. Now the thing is that uh, hot loading components isn't enough because that's not the only part of your application. You also have your application state living outside these components. And we are going to use Baobab for that. It's a flex-like architecture. It's the same principles, but in my opinion, it's a lot easier to work with than the traditional stores and dispatcher and, and stuff like that. Uh, but you will feel right at home if you, if you know Flux. So uh, what we need to do first is create a new file, which will just contain the state of our application. And with Baobab, um, that is just one object. You have one object with all your state. Um, let's just add some fake state there. And we have to export this state like that. And we also have to put this state into a Baobab tree. So let's create our tree file and import Bobob uh, from Bobob. And we also have to import our state from state and create the tree uh, Bobob. And put the state in there and export this tree like that. So we need to expose this tree to the application. And the way you do that with Bobob is that you hook it onto your top component. So the top component of this project is the app component. And we do this by uh, using mixins or other strategies where you can even use ES7 decorators to do this, but we will just use the basic uh, mixins for now. Uh, and these um, state exposure uh, strategies, if you will, uh, are available on the Baobab React project. Uh, so we are using mixins and let's put that in there. Okay, so now when we are later going to inject the tree into the application, this component will expose that on the context of the application. So any component, wherever in the, in the, like the component tree can just um, hook onto the Baobab tree and extract state from it. So let's do that now, uh, going to the projects component. Again, we need to extract a mixin here, a mixins, and that's a branch mixin, which um, we can use to extract state um, like that. So we can use this special property called cursors, and we will grab the foo branch. So this is a path into the tree. And if we look at state, that it's just foo. Uh, so now it will grab the value bar. Um, so let's say that. But as I just said, we have to uh, actually inject the tree into the application. So if we move to the top um, module here, the entry point, we see that we render the application component. And here we actually need to pass a prop called tree. 
and that will be the tree that we just created. Now this is really great for like isomorphic apps because you want to inject different kinds of trees uh, depending on who's requesting, uh, sending a request to the server and, and stuff like that. But if we save this now, we should be ready to use this state. And as you saw, the, the application actually refreshed the browser now. And that's because we are not changing uh, styles or components or application state. We're actually changing code uh, outside uh, those domains. So that's why it did a refresh. Uh, but if we now go to our projects and let's just change something here. Let's change this text and we say this state.foo and we save that and we see it, it changes to bar. Now, there's nothing special about this because we are changing inside the component and we know that that's how it works with the React hot loader. But now let's move into the state file and let's change this text to selected project again and save that. And now we see we actually changed something outside the components. We changed the application state and it just works. It doesn't have to refresh or anything. And this is really, really cool uh, because now we're starting to see how we can actually have a workflow where we don't have to refresh the browser at all at any circumstance. And that's really, really cool. So let's just dive a bit more into this with a better example. Uh, let's add a new state here called projects and selected project ID, which is null at the moment. Uh, so now we have exposed some new state. We save that and it doesn't need to refresh the browser. Um, what we want to do first is go into our projects and we want to iterate over these uh, projects. So first we need to expose the projects to the component and then we and since it's a map we have to uh, map over the keys of projects and map those to a render project method so let us create that method now render project which has an id and we need to grab the project from this state projects id and then we will return an li element where the key is just the id and let's uh, give it the title here okay so now we have saved that but we don't see any updates because we don't have any projects uh, but again you see nothing refreshes at all so let's go into state and let's add a project and give it a project one and when I save now, you see it just instantly pops up on the page. And if I change this, it will just change. Um, so what we're going to do now is do something a bit more complicated. We are going to make sure that when I click a project, it will display which project is clicked up here. So the way we do that uh, using React and Baobab is a concept called actions. So the way that works is we just create a new file called actions. And these actions has access to the tree. So a component can call an action which does changes to the tree, which notifies any listening components. And that's the one way flow we know from, from Flux. So let's import the tree here from tree. And let's create some actions. Uh, export default actions. Let's see. Uh, let's call that action just select project and we will pass the ID of the project we are selecting. And what we're going to do is point into the tree and we are going to set selected project ID to the ID we are passing. So when I save that now, we can bring the, that action into our projects. Uh, so let's import actions from, uh, what did I call it, actions. 
And what we're going to do now is uh, add an onClick handler on uh, the li element. So let's do that. Um, uh, where am I? Oops, uh, there we go. And um, on click, we are just going to uh, point to actions and select project. And we will just bind that to the ID uh, of the project. So when I now save, we should be able to, to click the project and uh, and that ID will be set. But now we have to uh, uh, we have to like get the project uh, out from our projects map using this ID. And the reason I want to want to show you this is uh, using facets, which is a new concept in Baobab, which is which is really great for handling like shared data in your tree because you only, want, you only have one instance of a project. Um, so you use IDs to, to reference um, uh, projects in this example. So let's see how those facets work. Um, what we do first is uh, define this facet. Uh, so let's call that, uh, let's see, uh, selected, project facet uh, and this is just uh, an object which we export select the project facet and the way this works is that we uh, hook on some cursors so we want to hook on the selected project ID and we want to hook on projects. And this means that whenever any of these uh, cursors change, there's a change within the cursors, this facet will run and any component using this facet will update. So the second thing we do here is define a get method. Uh, let's use ES6 here, get, and that will have the, uh, the state which is extracted from the from the cursors up here and we will just say state projects and id so as you can see we get the id from this cursor and we have all the projects on this cursor and we just uh, grab the project uh, using the id so let me save that and add this facet to our tree and we can do that by adding it like this, uh, selected project, and that should be selected project facet, which we need to import from selected project, oops, like that, oops. Okay, so now we have this facet, and again, we now did changes outside uh, the application state and the uh, uh, and styles and components, so it needed to refresh the, the page. Um, but let's go in and start using this, let's see, projects, this facet. And the way we do this is hook on facets property instead, and let's just call it selected project. And it's called select, the facet is called selected project. So we can just hook onto it like that. And this uh, value, this state will also be exposed on the state uh, property. So if we go in here and we take a look at our header, we can say this state selected project dot title. Um, we should probably, let's make sure this actually works. Uh, it's not sure that there is actually a selected project. So if we say this state selected project, let's make this code a bit nicer. Then we show the title or we say no selected project. Okay, so I will save that now. And it says no selected project. And you notice it didn't refresh or anything. 
So if I click the project, it says project one. Um, but what's really cool about this is if I go into our state and I can add a second project here, I can add the title to that, say project two, uh, and I can save that. And you see, it just it just updates. It doesn't need to refresh at all. I've been saying that a lot now, but this is what's so cool about it. And I can change this to zero. It says selected project one, change it to one, project two. And this is insanely powerful. Uh, like um, sometimes you have very complex application state. Maybe you have, have a list of something, maybe I've selected it, maybe that shows up in a model. Uh, and you just want to work around with the components and the layout inside one of these complex application states. What's really cool is that you can just force your application into that state by changing your tree. And then uh, you are, yeah, that's the concept. You are able to, to change whatever you want without refreshing the browser. So uh, this project is not released quite yet, but I just wanted to show you how it works and give you some info on Bob, which is a really, really, really great tool for handling application state. So that's it. Thanks for watching.